the city of Lund in southern Sweden dates back to medieval times. Over the centuries, it's witnessed plenty of change, but now there's a whole new sort of evolution going on. I'm here to meet some of the thousands of people in the country who are adapting their own bodies, who are inserting microchips under their skin. It means they may never have to carry a house key, train ticket or bank card ever again. This is a microchipping party. Yeah. Hannah's getting an electronic chip implanted into her hand. She believes one day we'll all be chipped like her. So congratulations, Hannah. Thank you. You've been chipped? Yes, I have. How does it feel? It feels good. I'm, I'm excited to see what I'll be able to do now. Can I touch it? Yeah, you can, you can feel it there. I feel like this is the future. It's the next big thing that's going to happen. Happy cyborg birthday. Happy cyborg birthday yeah. to you. Thank <laughs> you. Congratulations. <laughs> but is this sci-fi fantasy or practicality? I want to know why anyone would want to do this. For this teenager, microchips, it seems, are in her DNA. She is my daughter and I'm the, the father. So you're a microchip family? We will become one now today. Magnus and his daughter Felicia have come here together tonight because they believe this is the future. You're going to have an upgraded dad. Yeah. <laughs> As they say, it was good being a human, but being a cyborg is better. Didn't feel a thing. It's a quick, simple procedure with potentially huge significance. So you're officially part machine. How does oh, it feel? God, this is awesome. How cool is that? Good job. <laughs> Do you think in a few years' time, in a decade perhaps, we'll all have things like this? Yes, of course. Right, so I really do think. For around £130, anyone can get a tiny microchip like this inserted just beneath the skin in their hands. I can't help feeling a bit squeamish about it, but maybe I'm just behind the times. It's the morning after, and I'm about to catch up with Felicia and her dad, Magnus, as they get to grips with their new existence. So when you woke up this morning, mm -hmm. was it the first thing that came to your mind? How did you feel? I felt a little bit strange because now I'm a cyborg and um, it feels pretty cool. The chips in their hands use near-field communication the same technology that allows you to pay with a contactless credit card. They can be read by a device like a smartphone. So here I have, I've stored my business card on my phone with my details, phone number, email address, other stuff, blood group even. So what's the benefit of that? When I get uh, customers or suppliers at work, they ask for my business card and I say, scan me. Aren't there risks involved in that as well? Couldn't somebody pass you by and take all that information, yes. Yes, yes, it is in, in theory possible, but you have to be really, really close. But the main thing I think is that I choose myself what I want to store on this chip. The people I've met so far don't seem to have any concerns about blurring the lines between man and machine. Hannes has made it his mission to convince more of us to get microchipped. He's what's known as a biohacker someone who wants to improve their body with technology. What's wrong with just having contactless payment cards? We've all got phones, we've all got a set of keys. Mm. What's the point? The point is to reduce the hassle of exactly these things. Isn't that just the ultimate laziness? No, it's, it's, it's convenience. And convenience is a pretty powerful force. I mean, in the morning, every morning, when you stand there uh, going out your front door, you check your purse or your pockets. OK, do I have my wallet, my charger, my keys, my phone, my, all my stuff? What if you could reduce that by half? It would declutter your life. Oh, yeah? Hannes has helped develop several microchips. He wants us all to hack our biology. Microchipping is, he says, just the start. I want us humans to 
open up and improve our uh, sensory universe, our cognitive functions, and improve uh, all different dimensions of being human. And there is so much we can do. You want to make us bionic? Indeed. I want to merge humans with technology, and I think it will be awesome. I want to understand why it's people in Sweden who are enthusiastically embracing this idea, when many others might be skeptical. This is a nation of early adopters. Sweden set to become the world's first cashless society, and the economy here is driven by digital innovation. This national rail company has taken microchipping on board, with two and a half thousand passengers signing up to use their chip instead of a paper ticket. I've come to the capital, Stockholm, the epicenter of this tech revolution, at this shared office, hundreds of the workers have been microchipped. So no need for a security pass to get in. Per has had his chip for three years. So I take my chip and open the, the door. It means he can buy a drink without cash or a card. But for him, it's about much more than practicality. Do you enjoy being one of the first, being a pioneer of this technology? Absolutely. A whole bunch of questions come up, like, you know, is this ethical? Uh, do we want to have that? Or will we be sort of a nation of cyborgs in the, in the future? And what, what will happen? So a lot of sort of really interesting discussions come out from, you know, talking about the chip. It triggers an ethical debate. Yes. For critics, the biggest future concern is over data protection. As the amount and type of information we store on microchips becomes more advanced, so do the security risks. Ben Liberton, a British scientist working in Sweden, wants to know who will have access to the data stored inside and what they could do with it. So I have the information in my chip now, that's basically just me. If I don't use it for anything, then no one can really get any data on me. But then if I start to use it at work, then work knows when I've interacted with something at work. If I then go to the canteen, the canteen people know exactly what I've interacted with there. So the wider spread it becomes and the more that we can interact with different things, then our data is being kind of shared and incorporated in lots of different places. The nightmare situation in that case would then be that someone else has access to our own, you know, my health data and that one day I get a letter through the door that's like an increase in my health insurance premium before I know that there's any problem with, with my own health. So I think we have to be cautious now in the very early stages to make sure that we're actually controlling how the information is being shared. For now, it seems to me, what the chips can actually do is fairly limited. But the people I've spoken to are convinced that this technology will, one day, change the way we live. That in the future, we will all be chipped. And they are leading the way.